Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to cover some of the basic types of variation. So we'll cover direct variation, inverse variation, joint variation, and then near the end, we'll also work with combined variation, which really mixes all of these different types. All right, so what's the big idea with variation? Well, this is a connection between two variables. Uh, and it's usually a very special connection that shows up in a lot of different sciences. And depending on how those variables are connected, they will usually fall into one of these three groups. Now here are all of their formulas, and I've really highlighted the K in all of these. This K is known as the constant of proportionality. And its job is to really figure out how the two things are connected. But again, let's cover these one at a time so you can see exactly how all of them work. For direct variation, this is a connection between two variables uh, such that one is a constant multiple of the other. Now, if that doesn't make uh, a whole lot of sense, uh, here's a, a good example that you can chew on for a little bit, okay? So suppose you are driving a car and you're looking at the relationship between how long you've been driving and maybe how far you've gone, okay? So those would be your two variables. Now notice how the longer you drive, the further you go. So as one variable goes up, let's say like your y variable goes up, that's maybe your distance, then it's going to take a lot more time. You see, in direct variation, both the variables are a sense moving in the same direction. If one goes up, the other one goes up. And it also works when, uh, say, they're going down. So when one goes down, the other one goes down. So this is a very strong type of connection between the two. Now, what is the K's job in all of this? Well, that's because just because Y goes up doesn't mean that X is going up at the same rate. For example, think of our little car example. You know, every minute I drive doesn't mean I go exactly one mile further. You know, maybe I actually go two miles or three miles. And so the K will actually fix that relationship between the X and the Y. All right, let's do another one. In inverse variation, now we want to make sure that the variables are actually moving in two different directions. So maybe as y gets larger, we want x to get smaller. Or as y gets smaller, we want x to get larger. And to think of a situation that might involve inverse variation, I always like to think of like a big old rock concert, okay? So let's say that y is how loud the music sounds. Let's make x your distance from the stage. So if you were right up in the front row of this concert, of course it would sound very, very loud. So a very small distance, lots of noise. But as you get further and further away from the stage and you increase your distance, now it actually sounds less loud. You know, maybe it's actually really quiet when you get all the way into the back of the, the, the entire stadium. So in this one, if one variable goes up, then the other one is going to go down. They're going to work in opposite directions for inverse variation. And again, the K's job in all of this is to really fix how much they actually move. All right, on to another basic type, joint variation. Joint variation in many ways is a lot like direct variation, only we're doing it with more than just two variables. So y varies directly with x and with z. Uh, a good example that maybe you could think of how a, a joint variation problem would need three variables uh, might go into, say, the cost of the house. So let's say y is the cost of our house. And our variables x and z, one will represent the entire square footage of the house, and z will represent the number of rooms. So as my square footage goes up, then I'd also expect probably the cost of the house to go up as well. And same with the number of rooms. As the, as the number of rooms goes up, then yeah, that'll probably make the cost go up as well. So again, it works a lot like our direct variation. We simply have more variables. Now, once you have all of those three basic types, you can really start to put them together and make more complicated variation problems. And we can also mess around with the variables a little bit and include more than just a single X or a single Y. In fact, you want to also think of ones that maybe have variables raised to a power or even radicals put on your variables. 
To figure out how to put together something like a combined variation, you really want to start looking for keywords as to what type of variations are being used. So look for those little basic types like direct variation or inverse variation so you know whether to put your variables on the top or on the bottom of a fraction. Uh, let me give you one example of a combined variation to see how that might work. Here's a combined variation problem. You can see that uh, the formula doesn't look anything like uh, those basic types, but if we pick it apart, you can see those basic types are actually hidden in there. Okay, so here's how we would uh, uh, say this type of variation here. We would say that t varies jointly as x and z cubed. Okay, so what's going on there? Well, look at the top part of this fraction and notice how it looks like our joint variation. You just have the x and the z cubed. Now it varies uh, inversely with the square root of y. So inversely is putting that y underneath the square root all on the bottom. So when you see stuff like direct or joint, you know to put those variables on the top. If you see something like inverse, put those variables on the bottom. And as for that k, where should you put it with the combined variation? Well, just go ahead and just leave it on the top of all of them and it should be okay. All right? So those are some of the basic types of variations and how you can combine them to make even more complicated variations. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.